ông quay cho please be seated veuillez vous asseoir ông luôn chụp ra cảm to cái chấm đa ca này tại vị thi is now in session l'audience est ouverte as planned Today we resume Comme prévu. hearing testimonies of experts Chandler, la questions to be put by the prosecution. Chandler, avec les questions de l'accusation. Greffier, please report on the Greffier. attendance of the parties and relevant Veuillez individuals called to attend this parties. courtroom by the chamber. Et can you report on this status? Greffier, good morning, Mr. President. All parties are present. Greffier, Thank bonjour, you. Monsieur le Président. L'ensemble des parties sont présents. The President. The President. Thank you. Merci. Before handing over to the prosecution, to Avant continue their questions to the expert, the chamber would like uh, to rule on uh, two requests. Témoin, the first one is the request to place documents by the defense counsel for Nongia, and another one is the request by the defense counsel for Mr. Ian Seri. Deuxièmement, not to sit l'avocat de la défense de M. Seri a demandé à ce que l'audience uh, à ce que le, la Chambre ne siège pas ce vendredi. Now the oral decision of the decision, the oral decision of the trial chamber for the, the Nunchi defense team. De la chambre the chamber is seized of Nunchi's second rule. La a été 87 for requests to use uh, documents de la règle during the examination of Expert David Chandler, document, document number E172-27-2. In this request, the Nunchia def defense team seeks to put another 11 new documents before the chamber on the grounds previously specified in its first rule 87 for request. Document number E172-27-1. For the same reasons as given in its own oral decision of the 18th July 2012, the chamber rejects the Nunchia defense application. Le 18 juillet 2012, la chambre rejette la requête de la défense de Nunchia. The chamber's second decision is as follows, I, I would like to hand over to Judge Sylvia Cartwright to rule on this request. You may proceed, Judge. Thank you, President. Uh, the uh, trial chamber has deliberated on the request made by the uh, Defence Counsel for Yeng Sari, Mr. Carnavas, and has decided to decline it. The reasons are as follows. Uh, the application itself was that the Chamber not sit on Friday, uh, the uh, 20th of July, due to a pre-existing com commitment made by Mr. Carnavas uh, to um, uh, attend and uh, lead a seminar. The reasons for declining the request are as follows. The uh, parties have known uh, since the outset of this trial that although the Chamber would try to uh, ensure that Fridays were kept free of sitting commitments, the parties must be flexible because there would be occasions when it was necessary to sit on a Friday. This is one of those weeks uh, because we have lost two days of sitting time already. In his uh, oral submissions yesterday, Mr. Carnavas uh, drew an analogy between the uh, request made by the prosecutors uh, for a delay in the uh, 
start of this week's proceedings uh, due to the illness uh, of one of its prosecutors who was scheduled to lead the questioning of the expert uh, uh, Professor Chandler. Uh, and in Mr. Carnivus' submission, uh, if we, uh, having granted that application, we were obliged to grant his. There is no clear analogy between the two situations. Uh, the prosecutors could not have anticipated the illness uh, of, uh, its, um, uh, of one of its members. Uh, and uh, as was noted yesterday, the prosecutors have already been criticized for not having in place uh, a um, fallback position uh, in the event of a sudden emergency such as they were faced with. There is no such uh, clear situation in relation to the uh, request made by Mr. Carnivas. He has known of this commitment which he made for the Friday of this week, and he has known of it, presumably, for Mais some time. Uh, he ought to have anticipated the possibility that uh, the court would be obliged to sit this Friday and had in place uh, an alternative. In any event, he has national co-counsel who is well qualified and experienced uh, and will be available to uh, uh, represent Yang Sari tomorrow. Uh, finally, the Chamber has taken into account the absence of Mr. Carnivas for tomorrow and will make sure that the questioning by the Yang Sari team does not begin until Monday of next week. Uh, that is the decision of the Chamber. Thank you, Mr. President. Interroger le témoin seulement à partir de lundi prochain. Voici donc la décision de la Chambre. Merci, Monsieur le Président. The President, le just counsel, what matter do you intend to raise? Maître, quel est le Please sujet inform de the Chamber, demande. first of all, the topic you intend to raise. Uh, Defence counsel for Mr. Nunchia to proceed first. Thank you, Your Honor. Good, good morning, everyone. Just very briefly. For the same reasons that I articulated yesterday, or I should say attempted to articulate, we take exception to the ruling that was uh, just read out with respect to our motion on the admission of documents. Those documents are clearly relevant. They're in the public domain. No one objects to them. There's no prejudice to any party. They should be admitted. We should be allowed to use them. Thank you. Yes, chats, please. Yes, uh, thank you, President. I, I, I just want to Madame make it clear that um, the Nguyen Chia defence team, as all defence teams, have the right to appeal any decision, and the Chamber does not see the necessity for making an objection for the record. You have that right in any event. Uh, and uh, whether it's uh, an appeal that would fit under our rules at the time of the verdict or an immediate appeal, you have that right. There is no need to make repeated objections to the rulings. Uh, so I hope we've clarified that for you, uh, Mr. Um, Mr. Uh, Your Honor, it is, my, it is my national practice to make exceptions for the record, so I will continue to do that, and I think it benefits the public as well. We do not require you to make exceptions. It may be your national practice. It is not the practice here. We will assume that each time the court makes a ruling that is adverse to you, that you will consider whether or not you will appeal. There is no need, and the President uh, will uh, not expect any such objections for the record in the future. Thank you. La Chambre ne s'attend pas à entendre vos objections à l'avenir. The President, uh, yes, President. Mr. Canavas, you may proceed. Uh, good morning, Mr. President. Good morning, Your Honors, and good morning Maître to everyone Canavas. in and around the courtroom. Bonjour, I have three matters. One Bonjour is Mr. Ingsuri's presence in uh, uh, his health. Two, an ex parte communication that occurred between the prosecutor and Mr. Chandler yesterday after you left the bench. Uh, and three, uh, we wish to know 
Uh, what exact documents Mr. Chandler reviewed over the night, and we will be making this a continuing uh, request since uh, he is on the stand, he is under oath, and he should have been prepared. And if he and, we, and a request was made for him to keep track of all of the material that he was looking that he was going to be reviewing in preparation for his testimony, and from what we heard yesterday, uh, he intentionally and uh, deliberately ignored that instruction from the court. So those are the three topics. First, Mr. Inksery's health. I am told by Mr. Inksery that he is unable to sit here for long periods of time, especially in the morning, because not only of his back, but also because he needs to use the restroom almost every five or ten minutes, and it's exhausting. I've attempted to, and I say attempted, uh, to meet with the uh, doctor and to get from the doctor his uh, medical opinion. Shockingly, and it may be the practice in Cambodia, but it, I'm unaware of anywhere else in the world, uh, the doctor uh, is unwilling to uh, explain to us what exactly is wrong with Mr. Ingsari. Instead, he indicated that he passed along a report and, uh, to the chamber, and, and so I'm uh, left with uh, my client's representations to me. Uh, in that, uh, since we are in this position, uh, we respectfully request for the doctor to answer uh, what exactly uh, is his position, what is the medical opinion concerning Mr. Ingsari's presence. He has been following uh, the, uh, the testimony from, his, uh, from the holding cell. He is participating, we are receiving instructions, but uh, we do think that the constant, uh, uh, the constant having to get up and going to the toilet every five minutes and the pain in his back certainly interferes with his right to effectively participate in his own defense. So that's the first matter. As far as the ex parte communication, I noticed that there was uh, a communication going on uh, between the prosecutor and Mr. Chandler. It would appear that Mr. Chandler initiated the conversation. I wasn't aware of it initially, but I saw that there was ongoing, and I brought it to the attention. In fact, I yelled from here that such communications are forbidden. I think it is wholly improper for a witness who is on the stand to then be having communications with the prosecutor. Now, Mr. Chandler, albeit uh, the son of a lawyer may not be aware that that is the practice. The prosecutor and the lawyers ought to know that once a witness is on the stand, there should be no communications. I was informed over the, uh, by the prosecutor that it was merely for scheduling purposes. I don't care what it was about. The answer should have been, Mr. Chandler, I can't speak to you. If you, if you wish to speak, uh, if you wish to make inquiries about the scheduling, bring that up to those who are handling you. I think we need clear guidance. It may have been an overlap, or over, uh, a lapse. Uh, nonetheless, I take these matters very seriously, and I think we all should. It's not a civil party. This is an expert witness. He's on the stand. He's under oath. And he's consulting documents as he's going along. And from his own public admissions, everybody here, all of the accused, are guilty. And he opined as to what he thinks the accused will be doing in court. So in light of all of these circumstances, I think we need some clear guidance. And I can understand the prosecutor being in a very awkward position where the witness comes up and obviously he's very close to the witness, and the witness is merely asking for scheduling, but nonetheless, we need a clear guidance. And lastly, Mr. President, if Mr. Chandler is on the stand and he's testifying, and he had weeks and months to prepare, and he's the doyen of the historians on Cambodia, we want to know what material he's consulting. And I don't want to hear some global answer such as the closing order. What are the exact documents that he's looking at to prepare himself and perhaps recalibrate his testimony to fit the prosecution's brief? Because that's what we're submitting 
uh, he would be doing because of his publicly stated positions thus far. Uh, and I know that he's not under any instructions, but I think it's only human, it's with, with, within uh, human nature to recalibrate your answers in anticipation of what may be happening. So those are my, the uh, three topics, uh, Mr. President. And perhaps you may wish to ask questions of the doctor first so we know whether Mr. Inksiri should continue to be uh, present in court this morning or whether he should go to the holding cell and uh, participate, voilà, uh, as he has been doing throughout the, the, most of the proceedings. Thank you very much. The President. Le President. Mr. Michael Canawas, could you indicate again whether you Maître are Carmevas, making a request? Nous dire or... You require that the chamber seeks recommendation from the doctor. Are you making a usual request that your client be permitted to be present in the holding cell by waving his presence to be in this courtroom? And what is the reasons? to support your request. Et pour quelle raison soumettez-vous cette demande? Is it the opinions of the doctors treating uh, the accused persons who are detained at the ECCC detention facility? It is not clear in the command version uh, regarding the request. Uh, il pas My apologies, perhaps I was si speaking too quickly. I don't know what the doctor's opinion is because the doctor refuses to communicate with me even though he is my client. I find that practice abhorrent. I should know the status of my client's health. So I don't know exactly what the doctor is going to say. But what my client is saying is that he is unable to be here in court today because of his back pain and because of the constant uh, stress uh, uh, put upon him where after every five or ten minutes he needs to use the restroom and that exhausts him. Obviously, it's a request for him to participate in the holding cell. We've been making these est, requests. He's been signing the waivers. À it was you, Mr. President, that ordered that Mr. Inksiri be present here today. Passé, et, As he uh, sits here today, he's unable Monsieur to participate in his own defense. Présent présent being present physically does not mean being present mentally. Uh, and the right to assist in one's defense une, une also means the right mentale, to be able to concentrate, défense, to hear the testimony, and if necessary, to give guidance and instructions si uh, to the lawyers. We do have communications with Ms. Singh Sri during the break. So we respectfully request, based on what we have been told by our client, not by the doctor, because the doctor who's sitting there refused to even acknowledge my presence when I was communicating to him. To, to him. He merely walked away very arrogantly. Now, maybe this is the, his part of the training, but I find that to be abhorrent. I expect at least some answer, such as this is the, the state of his health. So I don't know what the doctor is going to be saying, but I do know what Mr. Inksiri is saying, and everybody can see Mr. Inksiri right now. He's in utter pain because of his back. So we are making that request. We are, we are, he has signed the waiver. Uh, and, so, and he's, uh, he's waving his presence here, but, his but he will be participating in the holding cell. So that is my request with respect to Mr. Ng Sri. If you are not aware of what the doctor's report was, then perhaps the doctor can si take the stand, be placed under oath, médecin, and give testimony. But I am told uh, that he gave his information to Mais the legal officer of the tribunal, of the trial chamber. Rapport, uh, Thank you. À la class de la chambre. The president. Le president. A National Council for Civil Party, you may proceed.
Mr. Big Pong, good morning, Mr. President, Your Honours. I only have a Bonjour, brief comments concerning what Mr. Canavas has raised, particularly about the not the no response from the doctor to him. I think it is not strange for a treating doctor not to answers to someone else who is not a judge. In any event, juge. if he is required to explain the matter, he can be called in as an expert or a witness before il peut the être court. En tant ou en tant que témoin, uh, Likewise, a witness or experts are not required to communicate directly to any les party outside the court. De uh, leurs, uh, Only when the person is called before the court as a witness or expert could parties ask the person. This can apply the same things to the matters that Mr. Canavas raised about the communication between the prosecution and Mr. Chandler. The President, Defence Counsel for Mr. Nunti, you may proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. I don't want to confuse the discussion, so I have a short addition to make to the third point raised by my colleague, Mr. Canavas. Do you want me to make it now, or do you want to provide the prosecution the chance to respond to the other issues raised by my colleague? Le temps à l'accusation de répondre aux autres sujets soulevés. Okun. Thank you. Le président. International Court Prosecutor, do you wish to take the floor? Le procureur international, vous avez la parole. In order to respond to the observations by the defense counsel. Yes, Mr. President. Uh, thank you. Good morning, Your Honours. Um, as a preliminary point, um, I want to say that we're, what we're confronting now is a is a pattern of behaviour by defence counsel of making requests and submissions at the start of the day when prosecution is scheduled to examine witnesses, which inevitably eat into our time allocations. Uh, we will have spent another half an hour today and yesterday, uh, out of its two and a half days, the prosecution was able to uh, spend just over half a day examining the expert. But moving on to the points uh, raised by Mr. Carnivus, and uh, point number one being, being serious health, uh, I'll be very brief, the prosecution has obviously uh, uh, no objection to uh, Mr. Carnivus with the authority of his client. Uh, speaking to the doctors, but uh, this is a matter for the chamber. Uh, secondly, uh, participation from the holding cells is in effect uh, participation in the proceedings, same as being upstairs, uh, insofar as the accused have access to, the, to their lawyers. Uh, and access to a video feed from the proceedings. Um, again, we're, we will leave the matter to your, your Honour's uh, discretion as to what the most appropriate way to proceed. Secondly, on the issue of uh, alleged ex parte communications, I, I have to say uh, we are both uh, surprised and, and, and shocked by uh, this matter being raised in court, uh, as Mr. Carnivus himself indicated, um, and, and, I, and I hate to, to deal with these um, matters in court, uh, but I do want to state them clearly for the record. Uh, Professor Chandler came up to our bench to inquire about scheduling, and my response was exactly as Councillor Carnivus suggested, uh, to ask him to speak to the Chamber about scheduling for this week and next week. I take great exception at Councillor Carnivus raising this matter in open court when I explained to him yesterday what the matter was about, and he could see that the communication ceased very quickly. Um, lastly, uh, on the issue of documents, um, I don't think we need to waste any more time on this, Your Honours. The Professor has been asked to prepare a list. He indicated 
Uh, he has already prepared that list in part. He will continue to add to it. Uh, as we go along today, uh, we will be uh, showing specific documents to the professor, and he will be opining uh, in part based on those documents. So this mystery that the defence uh, wishes to pretend is in place um, needs to be dispelled. Uh, we will be dealing with specific documents. Uh, there is nothing uh, controversial about the professor uh, looking at them and giving his opinions based on years of research. And while I'm on that matter, uh, I also wish to uh, record our objection to uh, both yesterday uh, and today uh, the uh, counsel for Mr. Ying Suri effectively seeking to intimidate the witness. We heard yesterday comments about uh, their intention to place Professor Chandler under great fire. We heard today, uh, again, offhand comments about his supposed bias. Um, none of these matters relate to their application to do with documents. This is a blatant attempt to intimidate the witness. It is a blatant attempt to, uh, if you like, give him a preview of the attack they think they can put him under. Um, and it is an attempt to uh, make it more difficult for him to testify. So we take great exception to it. Um, Your Honours, uh, Subject to you dealing with uh, the issue of Ying Siri's attendance in court, um, we would like to get on with the examination, if at all possible, in the shortest amount of time. Thank you. The President, you are not allowed. We cannot go back to the same issue. One party can raise the matter only once. Une partie ne peut soulever la même question qu'une seule fois. Greffier of the court, uh, do we have Greffier. the record of the treatment of Mr. Ying Sari by the ECCC doctor for today's morning? Le rapport du médecin de la Concernant the President, de you are not allowed to proceed. We, we are proceed with another matter. Mr. President, the doctor has already Monsieur examined the, top of the accused, but there is no record of the examination yet. The President, in order to deal with this matter, the doctor is now instructed in question, to be le médecin on stand et prié to be right next to the expert de s'approcher du bon des témoins et de s'approcher de l'expert the president international council for mr nuan chia do you wish to raise another matter or do you intend to raise the same issue otherwise you are not allowed to, to do so because the matter has been fully heard by all three parties or do you wish to address another new matter you are not allowed to proceed with the same matter here. The chamber has heard enough question, grounds for its consideration. Les différentes argumentations. Defence counsel for Mr. Nguyen Chia, can you inform the court first of all the matter that you intend to raise? Again, you are not to you are not allowed to raise the same issue unless it is a new one. Mr. President, as I told you in my first submission this morning, it is related to the third issue raised by uh, Mr. Carnivas. In order to facilitate your proceedings, I 
proposed to uh, discuss it after the other issues were raised and discussed by the prosecution, the health of uh, Mr. Ying Sari and the ex parte communications. So I uh, submit that I uh, should be allowed to uh, give my submission on the issue that is related to the documents as discussed by Professor Chandler. It will be a quite simple addition, taking no more than one or two, mission, uh, one or two minutes. Mon intervention ne prendra que quelques minutes. The President. Le President. Yes, uh, you will be granted uh, oui. that opportunity to Vous proceed, but uh, now the uh, doctor is uh, before us uh, ready to uh, provide his medical opinion concerning the health status of Mr. Ying Sari. Sur de santé de Ying Sari. Doctor, you may proceed. Doctor. Doctor. Le médecin. I would like to report uh, to the chamber. My je name is Dong Hong. I am the uh, physician attached to the ECCC. Le Subject, the health status report of the Rapport accused Ying Sari, Yang Sari as of uh, 8 o'clock in the morning. His uh, blood pressure is 8 sur out of 13 and uh, 13 out of 8. Uh, he is Uh, as a recommendation, he uh, can participate in the proceeding for uh, only an hour or two a day. Uh, judges, uh, do you have any question to put to the uh, medical doctor? How about other parties? Do you have any question to put to the medical doctor concerning his report of the health status of the accused? I do, Mr. President, but I see that Judge Laverne is conferring with other judges. The President. the President. Now, the Chamber has 
decided uh, that we would not grant time to parties to the put questions uh, to the uh, physician uh, due to uh, time constraint. And I would like to thank uh, the medical doctor uh, for your report. And according to your recommendation, uh, Mr. Ying Sari may participate in the proceeding for about one to two hours, and the chamber will uh, decide on uh, this matter before uh, we adjourn in the first Le half of this morning. So, uh, physician, you may now return Doctor, to your seat. The president, now I... My apology. Uh, now the International Defense Council for Nunchir. Uh, the floor is now your, but we would like to remind you uh, to be brief uh, in your uh, submission uh, because we have uh, spent a lot of time uh, this morning uh, on these uh, matters. Thank you, Mr. President. I'll be brief well, trying to speak slowly to not um, incommodate the translators. We heard Professor Chandler say yesterday Hier, that uh, he had studied the Monsieur closing Chandler order before uh, his testimony before your chamber, and I want to make it clear that we do, do not take issue with that fact as such. But as Professor Chandler has indicated, this Mais closing order Monsieur has Chandler, changed his mind on certain issues. We think it's relevant to note that the closing order is no more than a conclusion by the Donc, Office of the Co-Investigating Judges, and I would like to add that it is an indictment, and therefore it is inculpatory by nature. Document Considering that, I think it's important going forward with the nature, testimony of Mr. Chandler that we know, that all the parties know, whether or not he had access to all the underlying savoir, documents of the closing order. And if not, which particular documents did he have access to et and which particular documents did he not have access to? Accès, and I uh, recall something the professor said yesterday, and I do not have the transcript, so I forget Donc, the specific wording, but I believe dit, Professor Chandler stated, I wish Chandler I had had hier, access to that information or to those documents. documents. Uh, Professor Chandler could clarify Donc, si that to us. So it is clear that certain information in the closing order is new. We would like to know whether he, Professor Chandler, bases his change of opinion on certain matters on certain new documents that he did not have access to before, and if so, what those documents were. I will also state, just to be clear, that it is clear, quite obvious to us that Professor Chandler did not have access to Chandler all documents that underlie the closing order simply because they are of a confidential <laughs> nature and they were produced by the OCIJ during the investigation. So to a certain extent, Professor Chandler cannot know the underlying documents. Again, we don't, do not place any blame on Professor Chandler or anybody else for that matter. Uh, regarding that circumstance, but it should be clear personne, going forward what documents has he relied on. Because as uh, my colleague, Mr. Carnavas, has pointed out, the testimony of uh, Mr. Chandler has become muddled in a way, has become tainted in a way by reading the closing order. Again, we place no blame on anyone for that. It is simply human nature, but we need to verify what Professor Chandler Toutefois, bases his knowledge on today before you. So um, le professeur fonde perhaps ses connaissances et les nous donne today will be too late for Professor Chandler to provide this kind of information, but we will be coming back to this issue during our questioning of Mais nous Professor y Chandler. Lors de so uh, perhaps de the trial chamber could instruct, um, perhaps as a matter of fair warning to the professor, Donc, that we will be coming back to this issue so the professor could prepare for this uh, eventuality. I, uh, those were my submissions. Thank you. The President, thank you, and I Merci give the floor to the parole. representative of the prosecution. You may proceed. 
Thank you, Your Honours. Um, I think procureur. my learned friend has both yes, asked and answered the question. Um, the attachments to the closing order are indeed Les confidential, um, and therefore the professor is obviously very unlikely to have had access to them. Um, I'm surprised we're coming back to this point because I, I, I believe we, we uh, uh, had found a way forward. Um, essentially, uh, that we will be taking the professor through specific documents and through his specific conclusions, uh, where he is of the view that those conclusions have been uh, altered or affected by the closing order, we have asked him to so indicate. Um, ces conclusions and, and I think that's where the matter can rest. The closing clôture. order is, of course, a, a set of allegations le uh, which the professor has had access to, um, est, uh, and it, it may have provided additional information, okay. and he will indicate that. Um, I, I don't think it would uh, be appropriate at all, um, and, and counsel indicates this as well, to expect the professor to now try and reconstruct the uh, supporting materials for the closing order to which he doesn't have access. He can be asked by the defence in their own examination what the, uh, the bases are for, for his conclusions which they challenge. But uh, the President. Le President. first, I wish to remind the experts uh, that Premier you are called uh, to testify in a capacity as a witness. A so we témoin. would like uh, to remind you not to communicate with any parties to the proceeding. Que vous ne pouvez communiquer avec les parties. That's why uh, immediately when the chamber calls a break, uh, we ask the court officer to accommodate uh, you so that uh, you will not uh, communicate with other parties during the break. And on a separate matter concerning the uh, use of the various documents, particularly the ones identified in the closing order as well as the footnotes uh, in the closing order raised by the party, it is the same matter that has already been ruled upon uh, by the chamber and I would like to hand over to Judge Silver Cartwright to clarify that further. But I give uh, the floor to the uh, prosecution to continue this line of questioning. And if possible, you can clarify the time allocation uh, between the prosecution and the civil party lead co-lawyers. Uh, how you would uh, allocate times among yourself uh, for uh, the two days and a half allocated to you. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, on, on the last issue, um, we hope uh, there will be some scope to uh, accommodate us based um, in light of, rather, of all of the delays that we've experienced since uh, yesterday, um, if we are still able to um, uh, use up the entire two and a half days allocated to us within those two and a half days total, um, we will take uh, close to two days uh, and leave the rest to the civil parties. Uh, I, I want to stress that we will absolutely try to move um, expeditiously uh, and uh, we, we will try and deal only with the most important issues uh, but approximately uh, two days or perhaps a little bit less for the prosecution and then the remainder for the civil parties. And would you like me to proceed? The President, uh, thank you. Merci, uh, the civil party lead co-lawyer, you may proceed. 
Oui, Monsieur le Président, une fois de plus, je vais Mr. regretter President. que la partie civile ne puisse profiter que du temps Once que again, pourrait lui laisser le procureur. Je considère qu'il est normal que les procureurs disposent d'un temps, le, du temps qu'ils estiment nécessaire pour poser leurs questions. Et je crois qu'une autre partie, comme la partie civile, doit pouvoir aussi profiter du temps nécessaire dont elle estime devoir bénéficier. Nous avons besoin de 5 heures. Nous avons indiqué à Madame, euh, euh, Madame Suzanne Lang que nous avions besoin de ces 5 heures. Et euh, nous avons ici des confrères qui ont préparé ce sujet très sérieusement, qui viennent de l'étranger pour poser leurs questions. Il n'est pas concevable que la partie civile ne puisse pas, dans un temps raisonnable, bien sûr, comme d'habitude d'ailleurs, poser les questions qu'elle estime nécessaires. Donc je souhaiterais que nous puissions bénéficier de ces 5 heures. Je vous en remercie. According to the um, revised schedule of uh, the chamber, which uh, has already been very circulated to the parties, uh, we uh, would rather shorten the Uh, time allocated for the examination of this witness, and there is no possibility for an extension of time for parties as such. So we once again urge the prosecution and the civil parties to discuss among themselves how to best uh, allocate at the time. And the prosecution uh, has the burden of proof Uh, la charge de la preuve. Uh, for, against the accused and the other parties uh, will have uh, to uh, provide uh, other uh, arguments or counter arguments to the prosecution so uh, there won't be any additional time for parties concerning that matter. Thank you. De, délai supplémentaire. Good morning, uh, Professor Chandler. Uh, fortunately, uh, we're almost halfway through our first session, um, so I will be uh, skipping a number of um, subtopics and, and simply try and um, touch upon the main areas in the first uh, subject matter which I wish to uh, deal with, which is the, uh, as I indicated yesterday, pre-1975 uh, key events and development of uh, policies that you uh, also referred to yesterday. Um, in your books, Brother Number One and Tragedy of Cambodian History, you trace the origins of the Cambodian movement in Cambodia. Uh, we, we unfortunately don't have the time to go through uh, the entire chronology, so what I might do is um, uh, simply start at 1960, which is one of the uh, dates that you uh, consider significant in, in your books, and uh, take that as our, as our, uh, our first milestone, if you like. Now, again, in the interest of time, um, I will ask my uh, assistants to give you hard copies of uh, these two books that, and, and with the excerpts that we will be dealing with, um, but I will read the excerpts. Perhaps we won't go to the screen uh, in order to save time. Mr. President, with your permission, we would give the uh, professor hard copies so that he can refer to them as I read. Mr. President, we would like to this way, to give the copy of paper to the president, to the expert, to the expert. Yes, you may uh, proceed. Court officer is instructed to obtain the document from the prosecution and present it to the witness. Mr. President, we will remove the documents in question to the expert. Thank you, Mr. President. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Professor, you, uh, just, a, uh, just a minor housekeeping matter. You will note that your microphone switches on with a slight delay after I finish. The reason for that is that the AV unit is simply waiting for, your, for the interpretation of my answers. 
pour cela, c'est qu'en fait, les services techniques attendent que l'interprétation est terminée avant d'allumer votre micro. Donc, voyez, s'il vous plaît, attendre que votre micro soit allumé. Looking at tragedy of Cambodian history, dans la tragédie in chapter three, Cambodge, the document number is E3/14. This particular book is only available in English. The relevant ERN is 0019397. So if you look through those hard copies, if you simply look for numbers 97 uh, in the top left-hand corner, um, this is a passage that I wish to focus on, and it's a discussion of the 1960 Congress of the Communist Party. You state, the Congress has received considerable scholarly attention. Much about it remains uncertain, but three facts emerge. One is that Salat Sarr was appointed at the Congress to the number three position on a newly constituted Central Committee just below Tusamot in the Nguyen-Chia. The second is that the KPRP changed its name on this occasion to the Khmer Workers' Party, placing it semantically on a level with the VWP, the Vietnamese Workers' Party. We also know that Son Yat Min, in absentia, earned a place on the central committee. And the brief following passage in Surrey and Khoi Thuan were the only intellectuals besides Salat Tsar to be brought onto the committee. The next passage is in the same book over the page 1998. Puis, in view of the communist activities in Depuis Cambodia over the next six years or so, there is no possibility that resolutions passed at the meeting in 1960 espoused a truly independent line. Nonetheless, in hindsight, the participants were clearly breaking into factions. One of these, the eventual victor, was Pol Pot's own, another with links to the ICP, the Indochinese Communist Party, and roots in the eastern part of the country was personified by Sao Pim. Now, if I could ask you, Professor, to uh, describe for the chamber your findings uh, and your conclusions as to its significance uh, of this Congress, and of course you point to, the, uh, to certain appointments within the committee and the change et of the party's name. Uh, could you expand on this for us briefly? Parti, pouvez-vous nous expliquer cela bien rapidement? Uh, thanks very much and good morning. And before I answer your uh, question, I'd like to apologize to the court for what was clearly an oversight on my part in making a very brief uh, moment of conversation with the prosecutor. No, in, I have no ill intention in doing that. And I was, it was my mistake, and I'm sorry for it. Um, now, <clears throat> as regards the uh, passage cited, the Congress of 1960 has was marked by Pol Pot, and uh, particularly in things that he, he's written and said, as the, date, the official date Pot, uh, of the start of the Communist Party, the, the, commun the, of the communist, communist Party of Cambodia, saying it was really founded in 1951, but we don't talk le, about that. So the the uh, uh, genuine foundation occurred in 1960. And what happened in the genuine foundation uh, event, of course, was that Pot himself came onto the Central Committee for the first time, and, uh, the, and it, along with the Ingsari and uh, at Khoi Thuan. And this group uh, constitu eventually constituted a, a, a faction, might be too strong a word to use, and I'm not uh, referring to any uh, subsequent documents in the closing order or anything when I say that, but I see now this book uh, that may have been, faction might be a strong word to use this. Elements is more likely. These, these people did not uh, break apart in later times. Uh, but yeah, this was a very significant uh, meeting, uh, and it was a place where the Communist Party began to move out of its uh, period of rather of inactivity and uh, toward having a set of proposals that were felt to be appropriate for Cambodia uh, and to be uh, no longer under the uh, guidance, uh, formal or informal, of uh, Vietnam and the Inter-China Communist Party. So yes, this is a very significant uh, occasion. Thank you.
Thank you, Professor. Uh, moving on Question. to the next uh, significant si date or the date that you consider important, significant, um, uh, and it is the 1962 uh, period. De la peri um, de 1962. And, it, and again, it's dealt with in both Brother Number no. One and Vous Tragedy of Cambodian History uh, in the interest of time. Uh, I'll simply read a passage from the Tragedy of Cambodian History. Un extrait um, de tragédie de and might need to refer to the other book as well, but um, at ERN 00193 209, again, this is a uh, English ERN, the only one available. In English, the only one available. You, you, we have the following passage. Soon after these events, the événements. WPK's Urban Committee, perhaps fearful of Sihanouk, convened a Chien General Assembly. Some documents uh, referred to it as a Congress. Its, its main decision uh, was to confirm Salot as the Secretary of the WPK Central, Central Committee, du comité replacing Toussamot, who qui avait été présumé mort. Two of the 12 positions on the enlarged committee were taken by intellectuals who had studied in France, number three, Yinsei, and number 11, Son Yok Min in Vietnam was again elected in absentia, and Von Vett joined the committee for the first time. I will also read, uh, uh, for the purposes of, of, of continuity, uh, before I ask some questions, um, a relevant passage from Brother Number no. 1. This is a uh, document. I do apologize. The passage I just read was from Brother Number no. 1. So that was E3, no, There is a mistake in our notes. No. That was from tragedy. We are moving on to Brother Number no. 1. Um, Brother number one is E3 slash 17. This is available in English and Khmer. Relevant English ERN is 00392-977-8 and Khmer ERN 00821-727. Again, I'll be very brief with this passage. You state Uh, by then, Saar and Sari were both high-ranking members of the party. Their positions had been confirmed at a special party congress convened in the wake of the Siem Reap demonstrations, but before Sihanouk's return, at the meeting, Saar replaced Toussamut as secretary of the party, Nunchia kept the second position, and a little bit further down in that same, uh, uh, on that same page, uh, you state, what was important about the Congress was that it locked Salotsar, Nunchia, and Yingsari into positions in the party hierarchy that they retained for many years. Uh, I apologize for the length of uh, some of these passages. Um, if you could elaborate for us on the importance of si this 1962 uh, Congress following the disappearance of Toussaint Mort and what you describe Toussamut, about the locking si into positions in the party hierarchy uh, of Pol Pot, Nunchia and Ying Sari. Post, uh, the posts of Pol Pot, Ying Sari and Nunchia in the hierarchy of the party, posts that they will keep for a long time. Um, Sure. <coughs> I don't think there's much to expand on from what I said there. Uh, this uh, leadership uh, group uh, of the party, some, there's some question later on, some ambiguity about whether uh, Ying Sri or Son Sen was number three, but that doesn't matter. I mean, Son Sen was also in this very much leadership group. Uh, starting to move toward a sort of consolidation. I think uh, some other writers have said, oh, this meant a uh, kind of a semi-coup by the French educated uh, members of the party. I think it's very important to remember that Nguyen Chia has never uh, been in France, and it was a number second man for a long time, uh, was not subject to French intellectual patterns and so forth. I think some of that is a, is a bit of a, uh, of a, a misleading uh, suggestion that this is somehow sort of a French faction. It's just that there were some of them had studied in France. But it's significant that these four people, including Saint Sen, uh, then formed basically a core of leadership that continued later on once they came to power. Uh, should be said, of course, that. The only importance of this Congress is that they did come to power because this is a very 
voilà ill-equipped, ineffective, uh, frightened, uh, concealed uh, party. Uh, it, it wasn't. Uh, uh, I mean, it felt like the childhood of Mao Zedong is only important because of what happened later. <laughs> this is this, this important for the history of the party, but its intrinsic importance is only to these particular people because they were actually hoping. Uh, Car you know, to seize power. This is the reason they were forming their party. They hoped at some time to be victorious. And so they were, they're the optimists in the room, uh, surrounded by people who had no expectation that anything like that would ever happen. Thank you, Professor, and I, and I thank you for uh, your brief uh, answers. We will move forward now, skip a number of years um, in the interest of time, uh, and uh, make a, a brief pause at 1966 and 1967. Uh, these are discussed again in Brother Number One and in Tragedy of Cambodian History. Um, in both books, uh, chapters five are relevant. Les chapters cinq de ces ouvrages sont pertinents en matière. To uh, save time, there are a number of important passages here, but again, to save time, um, I'll just uh, uh, read very, uh, two very short ones from Brother Number One. Uh, this is at English ERN 00392988 and Khmer ERN 00821739. Professor, you indicate here, uh, quote, uh, vous écrivez, and I should say that the, you're, you're, you're dealing here with a je, je uh, 1966 study session, uh, which uh, you state at uh, Ratanakiri. Ratanakiri. And and you state, you state vous écrivez, quote, je cite, the escalation of the Vietnam War and developments in Indonesia and Cambodia made the 1966 study session a turning point in the history of the Cambodian Communist Party because they persuaded Sar that the party ta tactics had to be changed. Then over the page, you state the following. Sar and the others made Sa two important tactical decisions at the 1966 study session. They changed the party's name from the parti, Revolutionary Workers' Party to the Communist Party of Cambodia, parti and they moved some of their key personnel to the remote province of Ratnakiri in Cambodia's northeast. Could you uh, tell us um, Again, briefly, um, why you considered that by this stage the party's tactics, the, the leadership had decided that the party's tactics had to be changed, and that, that included the change of the party name and move of key personnel. Non le changement du nom du parti, mais aussi les mouvements du personnel essentiel. Yes, I think the uh, events in Indonesia were. 1965-1966, uh, an estimated half a million alleged communists were uh, put to death by the forces of the Indonesian government. Was this, if you want to use a terrible phrase, kind of a wake-up call to the Cambodian communists. They said, here's a, here's a country where the Communist Party has just about been wiped out by the government. And they were a small group. They felt, I think, that, sorry, perhaps it was in their interest to move away from the populated area of Office 100 in eastern Cambodia to a more secure base. Uh, I think also um, felt that they could no longer operate with any kind of an open uh, front operations inside uh, Cambodia because they, they, they were in danger. So the whole party went underground and uh, in effect disappeared. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it was a, and it was in this area, this, this base in uh, northeastern uh, Cambodia, where they remained for over the next three years, uh, basically just, we, we don't know exactly what they were doing, but obviously what it seems to me they were doing was were planning policies for when they would seize power rather than hiding from Sihanouk's police or things that they'd been doing before. This is a period of policy making, a period of consolidation, and a period uh, of also they were gaining strength. Recruits were coming to them from the cities, particularly in, in the local region of Ratanakiri, they recruited a fair number of, uh, of minority people. Uh, so it's, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a crucial change. And I think the, 
interesting point that's not mentioned in this book, but it's interesting that the seems to me the events in adjoining uh, Vietnam, which of course are much more well known to the people in this room, uh, perhaps are more well known than what is happening in Indonesia, were less paid less attention by the Cambodian communists. That was, they didn't mention this in their, we must change our tactics in order to uh, play some role in the Vietnam War, but rather to protect ourselves, we must avoid what happened to the Indonesia, work to avoid what happened to the Indonesian party, which was, it was demolished. The Indonesian party was just obliterated, basically, and uh, several tens of thousands of people were in prison after that. The ones who weren't killed were in prison for often 10 years. So it's a very scary set of events down there. <coughs> Thank you. Um, you've, you've indicated uh, just now that, uh, uh, based on your research, the party was then based, or the, or the uh, leadership of the party was then based in uh, the Ratnakiri area for another three years. Um, you discuss in your books, uh, again, both in Brother Number One and Tragedy of Cambodian History, uh, the uh, Samlot uprising, uh, as some authors have called it, um, and then the uh, subsequent um, uh, hostilities in January 1968, um, which were subsequently, um, uh, if you like, described as the birth of the Revolutionary Army. Um, uh, perhaps if we can uh, rely on your memory of those passages, or if you wish, I can, I can uh, read them out to you. But um, if you're able to very briefly uh, summarize the importance, if any, of uh, the uh, um, emergence, if you like, of armed struggle in that period between 67 and 70, uh, and then we'll move on to post-70. Yeah, the, uh, the beginning of armed struggle was significant uh, primarily uh, as a historical, uh, iconic historical event in the history of the Communist Party. It didn't amount to much. It was a handful of weapons were seized from a police station in Vatimbang province. Uh, <coughs> the Samlot Rebellion has been studied extensively, but no conclusive uh, results have come out of it to these, any, any connections between the uh, CPK and the uh, rebellion. Uh, they have, members of the uh, of the party have denied that they were connected. I think this is probably true. I think this is a disconnected uh, uh, a, a revolt uh, uh, conducted by individual people who are upset by government policies in that area. So, but Sihanouk saw with the Samlot rising, as I, as I said in the book, Avec that the Samlot, uh, for the first time, ouvrage, Cambodians, Sianuk without inspiration from overseas, could, or not visible inspiration from overseas, uh, were always the enemies in the Sihanouk regime, were people who were not Cambodians, uh, were able to revolt against his regime. So he got angry and frightened and quite and decided to fight back. He said uh, he, de he decided to really crush this rebellion with great force. He'd never gone after his own, his force had never gone after Cambodian people before to this extent. I think, uh, I'm sorry, I, I wasn't at the meeting, so I don't know what exactly was said, but it seems to me the natural response of Pol Pot and his colleagues would have been, okay, we'd better get an armed struggle too. There's no point postponing this because he is going to, his forces are going to attack our forces. And which is indeed what started to happen in, uh, yeah, in 68, 69, you started to get skirmishes between the army, which was permitted now to go after these local people, which I think they knew they knew who they were, they knew where they were, but they didn't do anything. Started to be some fighting. So you're starting to get, I guess, the very beginnings of the Civil War do occur under the last years of Sihanouk, rather than breaking out in, under Lono. Thank you. Um, moving on then to the 1970 period. Um, and of course, again, you discuss this in, in both books, uh, Tragedy of Cambodian History, uh, Chapter 7 is, rele is relevant here, and Brother Number 1, um, mainly Chapter 5. Um, again, I will try and um, uh, 
avoid reading long passages. Um, I, I believe you're, you're intimately familiar with, with uh, the events here. But um, essentially, um, you describe in Brother Number One at English ERN. 0392998 and following, and also Khmer uh, ERN 00821751. You uh, describe the um, events following the coup, the 18th of March 1970, uh, by Cyril Matak and Lon Nol, uh, and you also deal with the presence of. Salot Tsar, Pol Pot, in Beijing, um, and the negotiations, uh, or rather communications, if you like, which take place and which uh, culminate in the issuance of a broadcast um, on the 23rd of March by uh, Norodom Sihanouk. I don't want to deal with that in great detail because it, these are largely matters of, of, of public record. Um, but I will read uh, one quote and then perhaps ask you to um, elaborate on, on the key aspects of, of these developments. And we're looking here now at uh, brother number one. Uh, this is in chapter six now. Uh, English ERN 00393001 and Khmer ERN 00821752253. And you say the following. Saloth Sa did not emerge from hiding and it was more than a year before he was even identified as an official on Sihanouk's national front. Inside the country, authority was supposedly placed in the hands of the three ghosts, Kyu Sampang, <coughs> ostensibly working on Sihanouk's behalf. And a little bit further down, Sihanouk, ensconced in Beijing with an entourage of chefs, courtiers, and hangers-on, was a figurehead from the start. And a little bit further on, towards the end of that paragraph, the front's publications, financed and printed in China, conveyed the impression that the guerrillas inside Cambodia were fighting on his behalf. I know I'm asking a lot. Um, if you could give us a very brief outline of your findings. Uh, in relation to the events sais, following the coup, uh, the, the decision to form a front, and then the, um, the, the front's emergence, front and what you describe as Norodom Sihanouk's position as a figurehead. Well, you're right. That's a very uh, that's a complex question that goes into a lot of uh, areas that I <coughs> haven't not studied in great detail. Uh, it's a from Sinuk's point of view, the uh, coup was a uh, surprise and a uh, an, in, an enormous insult, personal insult. And when he arrived in uh, Beijing, he was ready to make a whole lot of uh, contradictory decisions. He was discouraged from doing these by making these decisions by Joanne Lai, his friend for many years, who encouraged him to work to fight against the new Lonol regime. Uh, Pol Pot was known to be in Beijing at this time for reasons we, we don't know what they are. We don't know why he was in Beijing, but he was. They summoned uh, Phan Van Dong up from uh, Hanoi very quickly, and so the, the elements of the front with Salat saw concealed, never came up forward to say he was an element of the front. Decisions were made uh, to form this front under Sihanouk's, in quotation marks, uh, leadership. I think he knew that this was symbolic, but he also knew that this was the most he could get, and it was a way of retaining some of his prestige, and also not, not just merely his prestige, but his feeling, maintaining his feeling, which I think was very deep in his character that he was, in fact, the embodiment of the Cambodian people and these coup, the coup people were, well, traitors. Uh, very much a, a point of view that you find recurring under the Khmer Rouge regime in complete opposition. I mean, anybody who wasn't exactly with the regime was a traitor. So, yeah, the front period is, is, is an interesting period. As you know, uh, acted in public as if he was uh, the leader 
but was telling, as always, uh, telling journalists, uh, although he said, when, when the time comes, they'll spit me out like a cherry pit, he said. Uh, and he had uh, uh, documented uh, bad relations with Yang Siri in Beijing. Those two just did not get along. That's a matter of record. He didn't know what the CPK's programs were. He wasn't kept in touch with that. But he knew there was something that he didn't didn't like. You know, something he didn't like, something not right, right about what, where they seemed to be going, sort of a radical twist. So it's, a, it's an interesting period from his point of view. I think the front never made much sense to the people who were running the party inside uh, Cambodia, except to make sure that the three ghosts who were actually acting in front of, uh, as a front in front of them uh, did not depart from any uh, policies of the party that had been arranged in secret. They wouldn't let these people come out with their own policies. These were working for the CPK. Thank you. The president. The president. Thank you, experts. We have received the request from Je our interpreters for you to slow down so that your message can be fully interpreted. Uh, Mr. Pro prosecutor, you may proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, please, please, please go ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. This was the one instruction my wife Merci gave me before I came up here. Said, speak slowly, so I'm sorry. <coughs> Go ahead. Very well. Um, just one question um, on the, uh, if you like, authority structure or the organization of, of uh, the, the funk. You, you indicate in the passage that we read that um, Norodom Sihanouk was a mere figurehead. Salaf Saad very much operating behind, uh, if you like, uh, uh, behind the scenes and from hiding. You also indicate that authority was supposedly placed in the three ghosts. Um, are you able to comment, if you have conducted research into this issue, um, whether or not the three ghosts, as you describe them, as, as they were described at the time, um, were in positions of authority at that, at that particular point in time, um, in the early 70s? If, if you haven't, uh, if this is a too specific a point, then please indicate. No, it's fine. I mean, they held the positions that they were said to, to hold. What they were able to do independently inside those positions is not something I'm able to answer. But it looks to me as if the evidence is not that they were ever ahead of or to the side of anything that, that was being decided behind them. In other words, this was not an independent uh, body. Yes, these three men occupied the positions that they were given, but we don't know what power went with that or what what they were told to do. All that is not available. Thank you. And moving on to 1971, and here uh, we um, encounter some discussion of of policy uh, as as studied by you from party documents. Um, I'm looking here at uh, Brother Number One, Chapter Six, again that was E3 slash 17. The English ERN is 00393008 and the Khmer ERN is 00821759. So the last three digits, Professor, in the English version should be 008. Um, very brief passage that I'm interested in. Quote, after 1971, party documents became more insistent in their class analyses of Cambodian society. They stressed that cadre must be drawn from poor peasant lower middle class peasant and worker backgrounds from deep down in rural areas, as one document suggested, extracted from the earth like diamonds. Relying on these categories, it was thought, guaranteed the disappearance of feudal or capitalist elements. Uh, if you could expand briefly on um, the policy, if any, that uh, these documents reflected in relation to uh, the issue of class. 
vous nous parler des documents euh, qui abordent cette question de classe We just, we just need to wait for the microphone. Il faut juste attendre que le micro s'allume. Okay, sorry. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, it seems, although the direct evidence of what was said of these uh, confabs is mess missing, that the party leadership spent the years in Ratanakiri fine-tuning and developing policies that they would put into effect when, not if, they never said if, when they came to power. Uh, so it seems to me they started to behave uh, in a way uh, like a party that was, was in power and that needed to uh, uh, expand its membership uh, in order to seize power, to expand its membership, and for its membership, it felt, because it was already engaged, it was engaged in a civil war with Lanon, that it couldn't seek support from the kind of people it was fighting. Its support had to come for ideological reasons. Uh, from the poorest of the poor, the so-called worker class of Cambodia, which as far as I know has never been, didn't exist, there was very little manufacturing, but <coughs> these are dogmatic uh, uh, places from which uh, the diamonds could be drawn from the earth. And also, to be fair uh, to them, this was also the segment of the society that probably felt uh, victims of inequity and so forth, had genuine uh, objections to the traditional Cambodian government. These had already been expressed, for example, in the uh, peasant uprising at Samlo. Moving on to... Um, An issue which uh, you discuss again in, in uh, Brother Number One, um, and I should say by this point you indicate that the leadership had moved uh, from Ratnakiri to uh, uh, an area near Phnom Santuk, uh, near the Krati Kampong Tom border. Um, the, an event which you, which you deal with in Brother Number 1, Chapter 6, English ERN 00393005, and Khmer ERN 00821756, is a July 1976 uh, school uh, study session and, and a congress. And the relevant passage is the following. In July 1971, a, quote, party school session for the entire country, end quote, summoned 60-odd cadre to the party's headquarters in, quote, the forest in the northern zone, end quote. Salat Sa presided over the meeting, which elected an enlarged central committee and proclaimed that the Cambodian Communist Party had entered a new phase in its history, namely a national democratic revolution to overthrow feudalism and imperialism. And then a little bit further down in that same passage, quote, without meaning I apologize, I rephrase that. Without mentioning Vietnam, the text noted that the revolution must, quote, be appropriate for our country, end quote, and that the party's leaders, also unnamed, were to command all aspects of the revolution. This is, um, uh, you're, you're referring to a, to a, to a, to a journal, uh, to a party journal in that, in that second quote. Um, if I could ask you first, what is the significance, if any, uh, or perhaps, first, what is the meaning, perhaps, of the concept of national democratic revolution to overthrow feudalism and imperialism, as you understand it, uh, based on your research, and whether that had any significance in this period? Yeah, the party leaders in 71, <coughs> July 71, uh, already were aware of two things. One was that the uh, 
primarily the North Vietnamese and, uh, and NLF forces had given uh, severe blows to Lon Nol's army. Uh, these Vietnamese forces had been aided and, uh, and uh, supported by the uh, local Khmer Rouge forces who were being trained and uh, armed uh, to a large extent by Vietnam at this stage. Uh, they knew that the, I think they saw uh, a certain amount, to a certain extent, they saw victory in the distance but in sight. And having seen that, uh, perceived that, they decided, they, 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 they stated that their revolution uh, they're the judge of all this, knowing there was no discussion, had reached a new, new stage. And the new stage was one where they could, uh, as it says there, attack, uh, uh, attack revolution to overthrow feudalism and imperialism. Well, this is in a party document that was not accessible to Nordom Sienuk, but this is, uh, Sienuk is a person of extreme uh, sensitivity of uh, antennae. I think he may have sensed this slight gain of overconfidence in Yang Suri or something. This is supposition, I don't want to put too far, but that the regime is, because feudalism is a code word for him. Imperialism is a code word for the United States. And th so they said this is going to be a war against the old society and America and all its, uh, it, all the uh, uh, So yeah, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a decisive, it was a decisive uh, meeting uh, <coughs> and uh, one that marked, I think, the, uh, a, a statement of saying where the party was going to go, and it went ahead. It went ahead in that direction when they came to power. Thank you, and we will come back to um, the issue of, of, of struggle with, with those um, uh, groups that you just described. Um, just looking um, for another minute at that um, uh, Congress in a tragedy of Cambodian history, chapter 6, this is at ERN 00193299. You deal with uh, decisions, uh, again, um, or other decisions, if you like, from that Congress. Um, and to summarize them, rather than to read uh, the passage, um, you say that one important decision was to send Yang Sari to Beijing. Another was to celebrate the September 30th anniversary of the Congress of 1960. Um, and what I'm interested in is a declaration that you refer to in the context of that new uh, party anniversary date. And this is what you say at ERN 00193299. No record of the celebration has survived, but the date chosen for the declaration of patriotic intellectuals issued in the liberated zone of Cambodia, September the 30th, was probably not fortuitous, and several members of the new committee including Salot Sa, Son Sen, and Q San Pan, signed the declaration. If I understand that passage correctly, and do please correct me if I am wrong, uh, there is an indication that members of the new committee included Salot Sa, Son Sen, and Q San Pan. Does that uh, refresh your memory in relation to the issue of Q Sampan's membership of the Central Committee, which was uh, raised in part yesterday? If not, um, uh, if, if you're not sure about it, and if you'll be speculating, then please indicate so. Expert, please hold on. At Courtville, Hear the objection from the Defence Council first. Mr. Canavas, you may proceed. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. It seems that the way the question was phrased is, is rather leading. If he's going to read a passage, you can simply read the passage and then ask him to give an explanation, as opposed to him giving his interpretation, that is, the prosecution giving his interpretation and understanding what the passage means. In other words, leading the witness 
is still a conclusion that the prosecution thinks it's necessary that fits their brief. So it's leading. We should, uh, we should uh, refrain from those sorts of techniques. I'm well aware of them. The prosecution is aware of them. They can ask the gentleman what he, uh, he understands that to be. And I understand that on in this instance, it was for purposes of refreshing a witness's uh, testimony, uh, witness's memory, but nonetheless, on a technical ground, uh, I object to this Mais sort of questioning. Thank you. Mr. President, I, I think that the, the question was entirely uh, appropriate in its form. I was very careful. I asked the professor to correct me, um, but I have, I have in, in the interest of time, I'm, I'm happy to move on and simply ask the professor um, what, uh, if he could expand on that, on that passage, ignoring uh, my question uh, and simply looking at the membership of the new committee in uh, 1971. Écarter ma question et de nous parler justement de, de ces membres euh, du comité en 1971. Let me either delay or, or not answer that. I have to look at some other, other material first before I'm absolutely je, clear. Pour être bien clair, je devrais <coughs> lire d'autres documents pour répondre à votre question. It might be on the preceding page, but I, I don't have the book with me. Uh, professor, uh, do you think you will be able to do so um, in, in the next break of 20 minutes or, or perhaps over lunch? Yeah, we have a, <coughs> if someone has a complete copy of my book, I could do it in the break. I just want to see what I've said of the, uh, about that committee in the, those two pages here. Mr. President, with your permission, we have a copy of the book can, and can give it to the expert um, if the chamber so orders. Uh, otherwise, I'm mindful of time, and uh, we're at your discretion. We can continue or take a break. The president, the president, what book are we talking about here? Livre, pardon, Is this book in the list that you request to be discussed before the chamber? Sur la liste uh, uh, yes, indeed, uh, uh, Mr. President. It's uh, a tragedy of Cambodian oui, history. Uh, the book that um, we've, we've been discussing is it's on the list uh, for these hearings, and we have a hard copy uh, which we can provide to the expert. Une copie papier de l'ouvrage en question que nous pouvons remettre à l'expert. Then you may proceed. The time is now appropriate for a short break. But before uh, we break, uh, the chamber wishes to rule on the uh, request by the uh, defense counsel uh, that uh, Mr. Ying Sari expresses uh, his intention to waive his right uh, not to be present directly in this courtroom, but uh, instead he wishes uh, to follow the proceeding from the holding cell uh, due to uh, his uh, deteriorating uh, concentration as well as his back pain that uh, he cannot uh, sit for a long uh, time in the courtroom. And according to the expert advice, uh, Dr. Tong Hong, uh, he also recommends that uh, Mr. Ying Sari can follow the proceeding for uh, only one or two hours directly in the courtroom. Taking into that into consideration as well as our observation of the health status of Mr. Ying Sari, he should no longer stay in this uh, uh, court room, but uh, he is uh, instructed to follow the proceeding uh, from the holding cell where the audiovisual equipment is connected to him, and the chamber notes uh, that he waives his right uh, not to be present directly, uh, but he will be brought to the holding cell uh, downstairs, and through audiovisual equipment, uh, he will be able to communicate uh, with his defense uh, team. So the request by Mr. Ian Sari through his defense counsel not to be present directly in the courtroom uh, for the rest of the day is granted. And Mr. Ian Sari is to be brought to the holding cell uh, downstairs below this courtroom for the remainder of the day. And 
AV uh, technician is instructed to link the audio-visual means uh, for him to follow the proceeding remotely for the rest of the day. And security guards are instructed to bring Mr. Ian Sari and the other co-accused to the holding cell downstairs. The court is now adjourned for 20 minutes, uh, and we will resume uh, at 5 to 11. Court officer, please uh, make sure Monsieur that you arrange the place uh, for the uh, expert witness uh, during the break and have him back uh, to the stand bef at the time indicated earlier.